I think it's time we talked about pie pans. You can always kind of tell when my wife's not around when I'm making these videos, can't you? So here's a pie pan from a company I know you're familiar with. It's called Le Creuset. And Le Creuset has been around forever. They make beautiful uh, cookware and bakeware. And the thing I love most about it is it comes in just such a gorgeous uh, array of colors. Uh, this one happens to be a beautiful like uh, royal blue or something like that. I have half a dozen of these in different colors. It measures about nine and a half inches across and this one is about probably an inch and a half deep so that would more or less consider it to be a, a deep dish pie pan. Now I have just one beef with this pan and, and it's a quibble I have with other heavy ceramic pans too. And that's this, that the coating on these things, inside and outside, is so heavy and so thick that sometimes I think it slows down the baking of that bottom crust. The, the butter tends to melt into the crust rather than, rather than steam up and, and make these nice flaky layers. So your crust is not as, as flaky as it could be. Um, so the way I get around that is in, anytime I'm using a, a pan like this, uh, I'll start it low in the oven, like on a low rack position, and at a high degrees, like 400, 425 degrees, and, and really shock that bottom crust. And then after, you know, about 20 minutes or so, I'll, I'll turn the heat down to uh, 375 or whatever. But uh, that's one way to get around this. But other than that, that's maybe a minor quibble. I really like the Le Creuset pans. So this is cool. This is a Polish pottery uh, stoneware uh, pie pan. And uh, it's not quite as deep as the last one I showed you, but I, I like to trot this thing out on uh, patriotic holidays, you know, 4th of July, Memorial Day and things like that. And it's got the pretty stars around the outside. You can see underneath here, it's gotten some considerable use. So I really like this. But one thing I want to point out about this pan and, and others like it, one drawback to this pan is the fact that it's got a very, very narrow upper edge here. And that's that's a little tricky when you want to uh, form an upstanding ridge and, and flute it because it doesn't give your edge anything to sit on. So just, um, and they tend to droop therefore or fall. So just keep that in mind when you're buying a pan without a, a rim like this. I'll show you some more in a few minutes that have, have nice rims around the outside. But um, these are really cool. Actually, in, in fact, I think I have a couple of these for sale. If you're interested, just send me an email and let me know. Um, so that's this one. Now this is one of my absolute favorite pie pans. It's, I got this at Williams Sonoma. It's, it's like their house brand. They call it uh, Gold Touch and it's made by a company uh, called USA Pan. And they have, I'm have another USA Pan I'm gonna show you in a minute. But this is a great pan. It's, it's non-stick by the way and you're not supposed to cut in here but as you can see, I pay no attention to that. Mine's all cut up <clears throat> and gouged and everything but it's still actually non-sticky. Uh, and it works beautifully. It's got, uh, one thing I love about it, it's just a really, really durable pan. I mean, you could take and use this thing as a, as a Frisbee and you'd probably never dent it. Uh, it and unlike the uh, other pan I just showed you, this one has, see the nice wide rim this has right here? This rim is probably about uh, half to three quarters of an inch thick. So it gives you something to, to rest that uh, edge of your pie crust on. So that's something to keep in mind. But I just really love this pan. It's got the classic, you know, flared sides like that. It's a little pricey like everything you get at Williams Sonoma. So I highly recommend this pan if um, you want something that really performs well. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of plain. It's not really a great presentation pie pan, but usually when you're eating pie, who cares about that? So here's the other USA pan I was telling you about. This is made by the same company, USA Pan, that makes the Gold Touch pan I just showed you. Uh, isn't that a great label? I love that label right there, and that's their, their uh, logo. But anyway, this, like the other one I just showed you, it's very, very durable. It's got uh, very, very uh, heavy metal. Uh, it weighs slightly less than the other pan. It's got that classic flared edges I was telling you about. But the thing to remember about this pan and even the Gold Touch one is even though it's not necessarily a, a presentation pan, 
it, it's a performance pan. I mean, this, this will deliver, uh, because it doesn't have that thick ceramic coating on the outside, this will deliver a beautiful bottom crust. And, you know, to me, that means an awful lot. I'm often willing to sacrifice uh, beauty for uh, functionality like that. The benefit of this one over the Gold Touch pan, uh, it's about half the price. And I've used a lot of the other, even though I haven't used this one yet, this one's brand new, uh, I've used a lot of other products uh, in their bakeware line. And this is really one you're going to want to have. So this is one of my Pyrex pans, and it's one I like very much. And the main reason I, I like this one a lot, it's got a nice wide rim on it, which is often uh, something you don't see on pie pans. Uh, Pyrex makes another pan, it's not as deep as this one, that has a much, uh, much narrower rim. But this is really good, especially if you're not all that confident about pulling your uh, pies out of the oven. Now there's one problem <laughs> that I have with uh, with advice that you get with Pyrex pans when it comes to baking pies. I hope I never wrote this in a book or an article myself. And, and that is, they, they say that, that Pyrex is very good, especially for beginning pie makers, uh, because you can see what's going on with the crust um, and tell by the coloring how your pie is progressing. Well, the fact of the matter is, you can't tell a thing by looking at the color of your crust. You can only tell what color the crust is. That has no indi that's no indication at all of what's going on with a fruit filling and whether that's done or a custard pie or anything else. So, I, by the way, I don't know how you would check it anyway. Would you take it out of the oven and you know do something like that? I hope not, or, or look like that. Uh, bad, bad advice. But anyway, Pyrex is good, been around forever, it's cheap not nearly as expensive as some of the ceramic pans. Um, you know, the, I think this pan was 10 bucks. You can pick up Pyrex pans at a flea market or a, or a thrift store or something like that, usually for two or three bucks. Everybody should have one in their uh, pie arsenal, so keep that in mind. This is a Hager pan, H-A-E-G-E-R. It's a little like the spelling of my last name. Um, I first came across these a, a couple of years ago in all places at a um, Cracker Barrel restaurant where we were on the road, and a couple of things about it immediately caught my eye. Uh, the first it was the price. They're about half the price of some of the more expensive stoneware pans. And the other is this here. Remember earlier I was telling you about uh, sometimes I think that coating inside the Le Creuset pans uh, slows down the baking. Well, this is coated on the outside, but not on the inside is sort of a natural stone finish in here and it, it leaves a very very nice browned nicely browned crust behind I, i've really been pleased with the uh, crust that i get inside this pan so that's one thing to take into account i'm not crazy about this uh, gray color it's kind of ugly but i have these in some other colors it's very pretty um, it's kind of deep. I'm not, I'm not crazy. I used to just love deep, deep dish fruit pies. These days, um, I'm not making them quite so deep, so maybe this pan doesn't get as much use as it, as it once did. You know, what? The, the price of fruit these days, I don't know about you, but my pies, <laughs> the size of my pies are shrinking a little bit because fruit is so darn expensive. Uh, but anyway, it's a beautiful pan. Look for these. Uh, it's called Hager, H-A-E-G-E-R, natural stone uh, pie pan. I think you'll like them. Now, if you've been following my pie making career for years, you might be a little surprised to see me holding one of these because in the past, I've said some pretty not so flattering things about uh, inexpensive disposable uh, aluminum pie pans. And um, I had a bit of an, ad of an attitude about them, but I've been changing my tune a little bit these days. I really, uh, I've been working with these a lot, so I'm not going to say too much about this because I'm making a separate video uh, about disposable aluminum pie pans, but I've really warmed up to them. And part of it is be because uh, I've learned to work with them. Well, part of it was, was necessity to begin with because I make a lot of pies and I give a lot of pies away and people, <laughs> people being people, have a tendency not to return the pans and you got to go hunt them down. Um, so I started playing around with disposable aluminum pans to try to figure out how to get the best out of them. And uh, let's just say I've had a, a good deal of success uh, figuring out just how to do that. Here's in fact, here's a, uh, here's a stack of 
uh, pie shells that I have. I just grabbed them out of the freezer. These are all in uh, disposable aluminum pie pans. And this is one of the reasons I like to do this because I tend to make pie shells in bulk. I'll make, you know, three or four or five at a time. And I like to put them all in the freezer. I'm not going to tie up my good pie pans with all these shells in the freezer. So this is one reason uh, one argument for using these pans. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say for now. But but just know that uh, I've changed my mind pretty much on disposable aluminum pans. I think they do a great job if you know how to get the best out of them. I'm going to do a video on that uh, real soon. So people often ask me if I have a one favorite pie pan. And the fact of the matter is, uh, I do, and I save the best for last. And this is it here. This is a, um, a Hess pottery pie pan. And this is made by Tom Hess, who lives out in uh, Missouri. And I first met Tom a few years back at a big pie event down in Orlando, Florida. And he was selling these pans, and I was so, I was so into what he was talking about. I mean, the thing I love about him, he's just, he's such an artisan. I believe this is the only product he makes. He like devotes his life to making these gorgeous, gorgeous pie pans using this painstaking process where he makes clay and it takes you know, like two weeks or something like that to make the clay. And then he forms all these, you know, by hand. The whole thing is hand done. And I, I so appreciate uh, what an artisan he is. And so it's got this beautiful, beautiful, uh, smooth uh, finish that's essentially uh, non-stick. He says they're non-chip. That I've, no, I've never chipped them, but it's a very, very durable pan. I've really put it through its uh, paces through the years. But if I could only have one pie pan, this would probably be it, simply because he's, he's such a cool guy and these are, these are such beautiful handmade products in the USA, I might add. Uh, so um, if you ever have a, uh, a dream pie pan, this could be it. So look them up, uh, hespottery.com.